My wife's uncle almost made a huge mistake that nearly cost my wife's grandma her beloved grand piano. She was moving down to Arizona and I was helping the uncle load up a trailer with her belongings and this included her pride and joy, her beautiful grand piano. We took the legs off, put the piano on its side, and rolled it into the trailer and up against the wall. This is where things went wrong. My uncle started to strap the piano in and did it something like this. I told him that it won't be stable and the piano could move if we did it like that, but he didn't believe me. When I tell this story to my students, they don't believe me either, but believe me, it matters. I see the same issue with other trailers going down the freeway. The loads look like they're locked in, but you can tell by the straps that they are not. If you see a load like this from the back, get away fast. That load is not as secure as it looks. Gladly, my uncle did listen to me eventually. We adjusted the piano and it made it safely to Arizona. In this video, we will do the math to demonstrate why this matters and show you what a secure load looks like. We'll be using some things we've learned about arc length in our previous videos on sagging ropes and basketball fast breaks. Those will help to see how just a little slack in the line creates plenty of room for an object to move or even become disconnected altogether. If you haven't seen those videos yet, the links are in the description. Here's a model of the piano and trailer load problem. A strap goes from this anchor, either the wall or the surface of the trailer, up to one corner of the load, across the load, and then from the far corner back to the trailer. The question is, does it matter if the piano is positioned here, or here, or here? Many of my students say no. It doesn't matter how the load is positioned. And they explain that the straps go over the same amount and out the same amount. So no matter where the piano is placed, the total length should be the same. But is it? You may be wondering, even if the length isn't the same, it can't be different by more than a few centimeters or inches. Well, if we've learned anything from our past arc length videos, it's that small changes in length can lead to big consequences. Let's do the math and see if my students are right. I'm going to put up some reasonable measurements and do some calculations. We will do two situations, one where the piano is near the middle and one where the piano is closer to an anchor. Let's say the piano is about 50 centimeters wide and 210 centimeters in length and our anchors are 330 centimeters apart. That means if the piano is centered, we have 60 centimeters on either side between each anchor and the piano. And for the case when the piano is off center, we'll say there's 20 centimeters on one side and 100 centimeters on the other side. To find the total length of strap used in each scenario, we need to find the length of each hypotenuse of these triangles. The calculations only require the Pythagorean theorem and a sum. For the off center case, we get a total length of 375.65 centimeters. And for the center case, we get 366.2 centimeters. Not the same. It takes about nine centimeters less of strap for the center case, which is about four inches. We could pick a few other off-center values and do the same calculation, and it looks like putting the piano in the very center is the spot that minimizes the length of the strap. Even better is if we could find a function to make this easier and find an exact minimum value. We want this function to give us the total length of strap given the position of the piano. We'll call the distance to the left of the piano x, which means the other side, will be 330 minus 210 minus x, which simplifies to 120 minus x. If we run the same calculation and graph the resulting equation, we get a minimum at 60 centimeters, which means there are 60 centimeters on each side of the piano to the anchors, so the piano is in the center. We could have also found the minimum by using calculus. We can think about this as an optimization problem. Trying to find what position of the piano gives us the minimum length of the strap. We can use the derivative and find out where that is zero, which is a potential minimum or maximum. Again, we get x equals 60. So what does this mean? That means if the load is off center, then the strap is not at a minimum length. So the load could shift towards the center and create slack in the strap. The hooks on my straps, which are pretty typical, only have two and a half centimeters or about one inch of grab. So as soon as the strap has one inch of slack, I'm in danger of a hook coming off. Nine centimeters of slack is huge in this situation. We learned from our previous arc length videos that a little slack creates a large sag in the middle of the rope. How much will that 9 centimeters of slack cause the strap to sag? About 40 centimeters in the middle. That's also 4 inches of slack causing a sag in the middle of almost 16 inches. That could be a big problem. Worst case scenario, the anchor gets loose, everything goes flying, like this guy. So do you center every load? Well, what if the load's not a symmetric shape and looks something more like this? with a triangular or trapezoidal shape, or something like a chair. We can pick some values and solve for the minimum again, 
And interestingly, we don't get that the center is necessarily the optimal for these shapes. This isn't ideal, because it would be nice to have a good rule of thumb like always center your load between the anchor points. It turns out there is a rule of thumb to keep your load safe, but it isn't about centering. It's about angles. Let's look at these angles here. Notice that when the strap is at the minimum length, then the angles here look equal. Is this always the case? Let's explore this with a general model in two ways, one with calculus and one with geometry. One thing to point out is that the length of the strap across the top of the load doesn't change as we move the load, so we only need to focus on the two lengths going up to the load. We can model the situation with this shape, give arbitrary values for the distance between the two anchor points. Well, actually it's the distance between the anchor points minus the width of the load. Then we can also assign values to the height of the corner on one side and the additional height to the corner on the other side. We will call these values A, B, and C. We pick X to be the distance from the anchor point to one side of the load, then the other side is A minus X. Now we write down the length of the strap on the two sides using the Pythagorean theorem. Unfortunately, we can't graph this to find a minimum like we did earlier. This is really where the power of calculus comes in. We can still find the minimum by taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, and solving. We will let Wolfram Alpha do the computation for us, and for how crazy the expression looks, the optimal value for x is pretty simple. Wolfram gives us two solutions. We need to check to see which one is actually the minimum. The other could be a maximum or an extraneous solution. To do this, let's check a simple case when c equals zero. That is the rectangular load case. The top one is undefined when c equals zero. The bottom one simplifies to x equals a divided by two, which is putting the load halfway between the anchors. This tells us that it's the bottom solution that we want. Now, how do we use this to check angles? We can use similar triangles. If these two angles are the same, then they must be similar triangles since they are both right triangles. So the ratio of two corresponding sides will be the same. Let's pick the two sides that don't have square roots to keep it simple and do height divided by base. On the left, we get b plus c divided by x. We'll replace x with the optimal value, a times b plus c divided by 2b plus c. This ratio of sides simplifies to 2b plus c divided by a. On the other side, we divide b by a minus x, and behold, it also simplifies to the same expression. This means that these angles are indeed the same, and now we can be confident that as long as we get our angles equal, then the load will be secure. We can also prove this with a geometric analysis, and it might convince you that if there's a geometric solution to an optimization problem, it's usually a lot easier and less tedious than the calculus solution. We can take a copy of the shape of our load, reflect it upwards, and move it around until these corners match up. Since the length of the strap across the top of the load is constant no matter what position the load is in, then the only segments of the strap we need to focus on are these two. And in this setup, these two lengths of the angle straps are also here and here, and they're connected at this corner. Since the anchor points are fixed as we move the figure, the shortest combined distance for these two segments will be a straight line. And when they are a straight line, we produce two similar triangles, since they're both right triangles and share vertical angles. So these third angles must be congruent when the total strap length is at a minimum. If we go back and think about the claim my students made, that the length of the strap will be the same no matter where the load is, then we actually have a big problem. It would mean we couldn't secure a load by strapping it down this way. What keeps the load secure, in addition to some friction, is that the strap length is at a minimum. So even if the load overcomes the friction and moves slightly, it has to stretch the strap even more, locking it down. If there was no minimum length of the strap, the tension would be the same no matter where the load is between the anchor points. So as soon as the piano overcomes the frictional force, it could freely move from one anchor to the other. So we are very lucky that there is a minimum strap length in there somewhere. Otherwise, we might have loads flying off trailers all the time on the freeway. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.